Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's Digital Dealer webinar. Today's webinar is sponsored by OfferUp and is titled Horizontal Marketplaces, Reaching Car Shoppers in the New Normal. Our presenter today is Alexander Hoff, manager at OfferUp. This webinar will run for about one hour, including a question and answer session. So be sure to use the Q&A panel to enter your questions for our panelists throughout the event. And now, please welcome our presenter, Alexander. All right, thank you everybody for being here. Just let me get my screen up. Okay, perfect. All right, well, everybody, you, you are in for a real treat today. Uh, my name is Alexander Hoff. I currently lead strategic partnerships at OfferUp, um, mainly focused on streamlining the connection between our dealer base and our uh, car buyers that use the app. And I'm excited to be with you today and discuss horizontal marketplaces. It's something that I wasn't familiar with until I joined OfferUp, even though as we get into it, you'll, you'll understand they're, they're all around us. So as we get into this, by the end of this presentation, um, some pretty straightforward goals. Uh, we'd love for you to be able to identify and understand the value of horizontal marketplaces. Um, second, be able to evaluate your customer acquisition strategy in relation to the modern buyer and how your business can offer the ideal car shopping experience for that same buyer. So even if you aren't familiar with the term horizontal marketplace, there's no doubt that you've been exposed to them in some way, shape or form. Uh, we're talking about any number of online shopping sites that offer merchandise across a broad, spe broad spectrum of product categories, whether it's new or used or both. Um, now, horizontal marketplace is the opposite of a vertical marketplace and vertical mar marketplaces are all over the place within the automotive space. And they make up all of our classic vehicle listing sites like CarGurus, AutoTrader, Cars.com. They're all vertical specific to automotive, but the horizontal marketplace is the equivalent of having a digital shopping mall in your pocket. So obviously the, the most well-known horizontal marketplace uh, would be Amazon. And a, a company that started in the nineties as just an online bookstore uh, has evolved into a behemoth that's the first stop for consumers looking to buy new products. And that's a very important distinction is that their main business is new products. And in recent years, we've seen Target, Walmart, they're starting to adapt their business models and follow Amazon uh, into digital horizontal marketplaces. So these three do come with their own limitations. And that's where marketplaces like Facebook Marketplace, eBay, OfferUp, and even Craigslist have defined their own competitive advantage. Now, these four marketplaces differ in two main ways. First, it's focused on used inventory, pre-owned items. And uh, we'll talk about it a little bit, but it's popular re-commerce trend. Second, they offer a direct channel for automotive dealerships to connect with car shoppers throughout their local communities. And this is the, the meat of the opportunity that's available in our, in our industry right now. So you're probably asking yourself, you know, where is the real opportunity? You know, Craigslist uh, has been around for a long time, but how, how is it evolved, especially in recent years. And these traditional automotive sites, CarGurus Auto Trader, um, that's where you find your, your in-market buyers. And yes, in-market buyers do use sites like CarGurus and Auto Trader uh, to do the research, but it's important to define when they're using it. It's a very limited and finite window of time that only happens once every two to three years. And remember this point in a minute as we dig into the inherent limitations of these vertical marketplaces. Now, these in-market buyers uh, spend a few hours over the course of several weeks on these automotive sites. Now, according to Cox Automotive, data suggests that in 2020, buyers spent an average of 13 hours researching, shopping, completing, and purchasing their vehicle end-to-end. -end. So 13 hours over several weeks, those same consumers spent 13 hours in a single week shopping on the likes of Amazon, Facebook Marketplace, and OfferUp you know, buying everything from appliances to tires or a new desk for their home office. So getting down to it, why does that matter to you? And it's because these consumers have been conditioned, especially over the past 18 months, to 
love horizontal marketplaces. And why that is, is because it provides an experience that's comfortable. They know what to expect and how to use the platform every time that they log on. And to think about it another way, Amazon, Facebook, and OfferUp, all three big innovating technology companies, but more importantly, they're data companies. And they use that data to create a frictionless, we'll get into that term later, experience for their, for their users. And so the more consumer, the more consumer shops on OfferUp, for example, the platform learns about their preferences and this simplifies any shopping experience going forward. To put it this another way, if I go onto CarGurus, I set a filter to find a vehicle and each time I leave the website and then come back, I have to do that all over again. I have to re-put all those filters in just to find if there's new inventory that's been listed since I was last there. And that's what we call friction. So on OfferUp, if I search once, the platform remembers my preference. The more I view and engage on certain types of vehicles, it continues to learn. Now, each time I open up the app, it'll show me the newest vehicles that match my preferences and that have been listed in my direct community. So this graph that you're seeing on your screen right now, it's pretty straightforward. It's explosive growth uh, over the past 16 months. Now I can only talk firsthand on OfferUp and the growth that we've seen over the past 16 months since the onset of the pandemic, but it's safe to say that metrics with other horizontal marketplaces saw the same upward and to the right trend, very steep vertical trends. So again, going back to March, April of last year, that's where this all started. And the pandemic has everything to do that. And why that is, I mean, if, if you get down to it, the pandemic was, was or excuse me, the, the marketplace, horizontal marketplaces were built for a pandemic shopper. But those pandemic shoppers are now transitioning into what we're considering the modern shopper. And they're gonna be here moving forward. So I want to dive into four, four main things that the modern shopper is looking for. And first and foremost, it's simplicity of one-stop shopping. And that's the, the power and the reach of horizontal marketplaces is that you can go and get anything that you need, whether it's a car or a new headlamp, or like I said before, a new desk for your home office. It's better to go to one place for 10 items than 10 places for 10 items. Okay. So the other part of this is convenience. And we've talked about the word frictionless. Amazon has their buy it now button. And it really is about making it as simple and straightforward for the user from a user experience standpoint to use the app whenever they log on. And the original vision of OfferUp Marketplace was to enable a consumer to buy or sell anything within three clicks. So moving on to the, the community, and this is uh, very important to OfferUp. Uh, we've all heard about the trend, shop small, shop local, uh, referring to supporting small businesses in your community. We all feel better when we see the local produce label at the grocery store, or you buy your spouse a unique gift from a local boutique rather than a major retailer. And those purchases simply mean more. And they mean more both in sentiment, but also in dollars. And a recent, recent survey by Mint revealed that 82% of consumers would pay more for goods in order to support a local business. And automotive dealerships are no different. They're re residents in your community. They wanna feel comfortable with the dealership they purchase from. And by quote unquote, keeping the business in the community, they feel good about that purchase. They're supporting your dealership that employs their neighbor and countless other members throughout the community. And horizontal marketplaces make it very easy for consumers to, to search and to find local businesses to buy from and support. Finally, we, we land on responsibility. And it's important to call out that offer up, you'll hear us talk about re-commerce a lot. We come out with a re-commerce report at the beginning of every year. Um, the resale of secondhand goods, very straightforward. And it's important because it's socially responsible, it's sustainable, and it keeps millions of tons of goods out of the landfill every year. And we're, we're deeply passionate about giving goods a second life at offer up. So all of this convenience uh, creates what we call the flywheel effect. And this is the momentum that gets built into the horizontal marketplace. So very straightforward. If a marketplace is easy to use, buyers and sellers gravitate there. Sellers find it easy to list items, get them matched to the right buyers. Buyers find a broad selection of goods 
and custom tailored to their unique tastes, which attracts more of them. The increased demand attracts more, more sellers and the flywheel of supply and demand feeds itself. And this is how you know, we've seen Amazon grow. It's how we've seen OfferUp grow. It's how we've seen uh, other horizontal marketplaces grow. The easier it is, the more frictionless the experience is for both sellers and buyers, the more it's going to grow organically. So reach is a, a huge value add. Uh, you saw that a couple of slides ago with those four horizontal marketplaces that focus on secondhand goods, having over a billion users a month. Um, and, and that's a huge amount of reach, but there's also the stickiness factor to consider. And you remember we were talking about the 13 hours car shoppers spend researching for a vehicle purchase. And it's very important to call out that a shopper visits and engages with your website when that happens, it's transactional. Uh, they either find what they're looking for or not, and then they leave. Uh, there's no mechanism for keeping them connected to your website, to your dealership on a daily or monthly basis. So you have very little opportunity to engage with them in a meaningful way to follow through after the transaction. And with more conservative privacy policies and cookie limitations in place, it's getting harder and harder to, to stay digitally connected to this audience. So there's also a reality that there's not a lot of community or consumer appetite for car shopping apps or dealership apps. And you know this firsthand, if they aren't gonna use an app frequently, and I mean frequently month over month, they likely aren't gonna download it from the very beginning. And I, I was reading a study last week and this was a very kind of just shocking stat, uh, came out by Comscore found that two thirds of smartphone users download zero new apps each month, which is astonishing when roughly 88, 90% of mobile internet time is spent in apps. So it is paramount for this industry that dealerships like yourself, you're able to be discovered on these apps that the consumers are using most. And so something you may not be aware of, but OfferUp is a top five shopping app and uh, both iOS and Android, but in Q1 of this year, it was the number two shopping app. So again, being where these consumers are on a regular basis, and you see on your screen there that offer up users are, are coming to the app 19 times a month on average. And, and that's, that's a whole lot of stickiness and opportunity to brand your dealership in front of uh, in-market buyers, but also future car buyers that aren't actively visiting your website. So why, why 19 times a month? Like why is there so much traffic coming through OfferUp? Um, and, and again, I can only speak to OfferUp specifically, but other marketplaces, they, they are having the same success and traction. Um, so if you think about a Google search, it, it returns text. It's hard for your dealership to one, show up in the results at all, two, to stand out. And the user experience is just aesthetically pretty dull. It doesn't promote high levels of engagement. Now, if you think about OfferUp, uh, the whole brand was built on simplicity, a clean, endless flow of pictures, something that keeps you digging in and discovering more. And the benefit to, to our dealership customers is with a single search, you can have three, four, five of your vehicles show up, and that is way more meaningful exposure to your targeted audience. Again, the experience is consistent across all the categories, and that's what users love and why they keep coming back to OfferUp. So let's dig into who these consumers are. Um, and the data I'm gonna share, it's based on some of our internal user data uh, and car shopper surveys that we run uh, natively. So first and foremost, they're younger. Uh, I think it was Cox Automotive came out and said that the average car shopper uh, is around 50 years old. I believe that came out February. And you can see that we're, we're leaning towards a younger 25 to 44 audience. And so, What's, what's happening here is that it's pretty split between male and female, which you would expect, but it's the mobile shopping experience. Over 70% prefer mobile shopping rather than web or in-person. When I say web, I mean a desktop, a computer application rather than being on a mobile device, like a, like a smartphone. And this data aligns uh, a lot with independent research, like this e-marketer e statistic of mobile preferences and, and higher 
mobile preference is higher among 18 to 44 age groups. Uh, and here's why that's gonna be so important in coming years. By 2025, it's projected that the millennial and Gen Z population will account for 75% of all sales. So that, that's a huge amount of the market that is going to be taken over by these younger generations that are privy and they prefer the mobile shopping experience. So among OfferUp shoppers specifically, uh, over 25% say that they're only shopping on OfferUp when they're researching and buying a vehicle. So that's, a, again, a huge amount of traffic that is only coming to these horizontal marketplaces, but also in a mobile fashion. So as we continue to key in on this modern car buyer, um, again, they, they transformed from the pandemic shopper. You know, we were all forced into our homes and we, we had to adopt to a digital first um, shopping experience, which was very different for the car industry. Now, what we found is that the modern buyer, they, they, for the most part, they didn't own a car before the pandemic. And they no longer want to use public transportation, whether that's for sanitary reasons or it's just no longer convenient. And if, if you think about it, it, it makes a lot of sense. You know, the, the home prices on average have gone up 23% year over year. That's largely because we've seen a mass exodus of people migrating from city dwellings to the suburbs. And these same people now need a car because public transportation is no longer convenient. So to put it another way, uh, EY Global came out with a study that's uh, one third of consumers that do not have a vehicle plan on buying one in the next six months. That came out earlier this year. And with the rising prices of new cars uh, that we've all been experiencing, I believe we just eclipsed 41,000, um, the average new car price. Pre-owned is quickly, if not already, becoming the entry-level option and preferred option for first-time car buyers. So moving, moving down the list, uh, contactless services, again, this was introduced during the pandemic, it's still one of our number one most requested options. And uh, when we surveyed some car shoppers, 18% report that they would buy sooner if there was a full online purchase option available. Again, going, going with the convenience and the efficiency that they can get in a one-stop shop. So going down to uh, the last one, transparency. Um, personally, I think that this is the single most important factor to the modern car shopper. And it boils down to how does the consumer know that they can trust the quality of the car matches the description that they're seeing online. And Carfax is great. Uh, they have a great product, uh, but it doesn't show you the aesthetics. It shows you number of prior prior accidents, if there were any, or number of owners, but it doesn't tell you, does the car smell like smoke? Is there structural damage? Is the paint uh, coming off in a small section of the rear bumper? Uh, so it's, it's a coming trend that modern buyers, they want an additional layer of inspection. And I'm not saying that we need to do a full mechanical inspection on every vehicle, but companies like True360, uh, I've been following for a little while, they have come out with reports that uh, analyze the vehicles for cosmetic and structural integrity, and then give it a score. And what they're finding is they're able to reduce the time to sell a vehicle by up to 70%. And that all comes down to transparency and helping the, the car shopper feel more comfortable with the process. So getting into uh, five things that are, uh, again, super important to the modern car shopper when it comes to user experience. Um, the first one, frictionless online purchase process. We've talked about that. I feel like I'm harping on it now, but here at OfferUp, we have an operating principle we call customer obsession. So it's start with the customer and work backwards. And everything we do is to enhance the user experience and make sure that it's enjoyable and simple for them to, to do. And so going into a, a Forrester uh, e-business strategy uh, report indicated that 61% of all U.S. adults are unlikely to return to a merchant or a brand at large that doesn't provide a satisfactory customer experience. Now, I wanted to give a, a personal example of this. So it was a few years ago, I was buying my first car, um, first new car, excuse me. I'd driven beaters for years. And I went to my local CDJR. I was raised on Jeeps. I thought, you know, my, my first new car is going to be a, a Jeep Grand Cherokee. I was super excited about that. 
And my wife and I stood in the showroom for 15 minutes without anybody coming up and seeing if we needed help, if we wanted to take a test drive. And so it, it's safe to say that the experience didn't get any better from there. Now, later that day, I had a complete 180 experience at the local Toyota dealership. Um, it was personable and it was just wonderful from beginning to end. And I ended up signing for my first forerunner uh, on that same visit. Now, here's the key. When it came time for me to trade that in, I didn't go to any other dealership. I went back to Toyota, got another, another forerunner three years later. And it was because of that first experience, it was so amazing that they earned my business every single time I needed a new car going forward. So going down to familiar shopping experiences again, um, comfortability, familiarity, uh, convenience, it, it has to be easy. You know, we've talked about frictionless a lot, um, but that, that's really what it boils down to. And that means fewer steps, clear instructions, no waiting for somebody or something to happen outside the session. And so if you think about OfferUp, uh, I was recently looking for a vinyl for Led Zeppelin's first album. And here's how easy it was. I opened the app, searched for Led Zeppelin vinyl, found a seller uh, located in another state, chatted with them, made an offer. They accepted, and that was it. So if you're following with me, it took me three clicks once I had opened the app to find the product and start the process to have it shipped to me. And this was all possible because the app was familiar and it was built to be easily navigated, okay? Horizontal marketplace shoppers, they're comfortable because it's familiar and their preferred channel uh, to shop and buy is these one-stop shop applications. So again, I, I use two, two apps to buy things on my phone and it's Amazon for new products and offer up for secondhand goods. And ju just like anything else, shoppers are gonna be unique and the way I use Amazon or offer up may be different than how you use them. So it's important that the shoppers have options in terms of how they engage uh, and complete a purchase. So at OfferUp, we, we give three main communication mediums that car buyers can reach out to y'all. Uh, first, they can call you directly. Our dealerships are the only users that have a click to call direct access for that. They can live chat or they can send you their personal contact information and have you call them. Okay, so again, give, giving the, the modern shopper options is, is really key. Now, control of communication, accessible information from experts. Um, these are two really important uh, insights and they go very much hand in hand. So we're gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive on these last two bullet points. So asynchronous communication, it's a super fancy way to say not both parties have to be present to have a conversation, okay? They don't both have to be live and present at the same time to have a conversation. So the antithesis, a synchronous communication would be a phone call, a person to person live conversation that uh, happens via phone, it's an in-person sale, something like that. But asynchronous communication channels, which are gaining popularity by the day, um, those are things like text message, social media, mobile app messaging, uh, live chat, which is a foundational feature of the OfferUp app, uh, it allows the customer to start, pause, resume a conversation based on their availability. It doesn't all have to happen at once. There's no pressure to get everything done in one shot. And so this puts them in control and they can choose the channel uh, that works best for them. And so again, really quick response is paramount to this. The same Forrester report indicated that I think it was 47%, almost half, will abandon an online purchase uh, if they don't get a quick answer back. And so in the car industry, what, what do we define that as? That as? Um, a quick answer, I mean, it is standard practice, five minutes or less, but we, we see it in the hard data here at OfferUp. Our dealers who respond to their, their live chats in under five minutes, they convert 127% more leads than dealers that take over five minutes. So it's a huge margin um, getting under that five minute mark and that's why it's industry standard. So getting into the, the practical application, how can you uh, take advantage of horizontal marketplaces? And it's, it's very important that we understand things are not going back to the way they were. Um, we've seen a huge acceleration to full online retailing 
and it's not going to slow down. And why is that? Because it's, it's a new bar. It's a new experience that everybody loved. It was convenient. It was simple. And so don't expect it to go back to the way it was, especially with these younger generations coming up. And this is going to be their preferred communication mediums and shopping platforms. So second, embrace that the, the modern shopper wants control of the process. Okay, let them, they're more likely to be a loyal customer uh, and they're more likely to engage with you on a, on a regular basis if you give them a unique and meaningful experience when shopping for a vehicle. So third thing, give them options and tailor the shopping experience, buying process for them. So we talked about contactless, touchless. It's really just the more that they can complete autonomously, um, the, the better. You know, 80% of people still wanna come into the dealership in person to close the deal, but the more that they can do upfront before they get into the dealership, the better. It just makes it simpler and easier on them. Um, the last thing, take advantage of the streamlined communication. It's a wonderful way to nurture interested buyers. Some people are very uh, hesitant to reach out to a dealership. It can be intimidating, but th this on-demand communication is, is gold. It's exactly what the modern car shopper loves. And it's why we have um, users that come back 19 times a month. So second thing to dig into is understand how different horizontal marketplaces uh, differ from each other. And this can be uh, run the gamut from, you know, the user base itself, the user experience, what's the communication medium, but it's important to think about, okay, how, how is this marketplace, how is this advertising strategy going to fit into my, my current marketing strategies? Um, and how is it going to fit into my tech stack, like your CRM? Are all of the uh, leads and chat engagements able to be filtered in, or do you leverage a managed chat provider, like an Active Engage, Google Goo, Carnow type company that allows them to um, work the leads for you so that you only get the serious buyers? So it's important to see, okay, what are, what are the, the key differentiators with each and which one is the best option for my dealership? Um, last thing, last thing. Leverage the reach, both in terms of volume, both in terms of targeting. Um, remember, we talked about stickiness, and I cannot harp on that enough. When you shop on an Amazon or an OfferUp, you think about all the data and the insights that's collected. It's getting harder and harder to use the data to target the shopper outside of those native platforms. But when you are in those platforms, it's gold. Okay, The marketplace has uh, unlimited resources to allow you to gain targeting traction with the right buyers, okay? Remember, the more they use the platform, the more uh, the platform picks up on their preferences and they can target your vehicles at the appropriate buyers. So the reach that these marketplaces have, uh, it's typically skewed more towards the pre-owned vehicle audience and that's inherent. We talked about that at the very beginning. But it's, it's important to keep in mind that there's a lot of reach, there's a lot of action going on here. And so I would highly recommend getting your vehicles on, on one of these marketplaces to take advantage. Um, and one thing that we're seeing, uh, it's come up, man, tens of times in the past couple months is we all know that there's, there's a vehicle shortage, whether it's new, new inventory, used inventory, but OfferUp uh, specifically has literally millions of private seller cars on the application. And there is no reason that you couldn't go on there and source new inventory and potentially new trade-ins and sales directly from the app. So appreciate everybody hanging in there with me. And uh, do we have any questions? Great, now let's do the Q&A session. A reminder for the audience, please continue to enter your questions to the Q&A panel. So our first one here is, how can I successfully leverage a horizontal marketplace to drive more awareness for my brand? Um, yeah, so a horizontal marketplace, I really like to, to key in on the targeting aspects of it. It's very sophisticated algorithms. Um, if you think about it like a, a billboard, if you, you know, traditional media, if you were to put a billboard of your dealership on a major highway 
maybe 150,000 people drive past it each month. It's very similar to that, except for you're putting it in front of 150,000 people looking for your product. There's no guarantee that somebody driving down the road is in the market for a new car. But the, the targeting is really the value that, that comes from these, these horizontal marketplaces. So the more of your inventory you can get on there and the, the more acquainted that you can get with the technology and how to um, nurture leads, that, that's gonna be, gonna be dynamite for your dealership. All right, great. Our next one here says, how do we not get lost in all the ads? In parentheses, Amazon, comma, promoted content. Um, can I get a little bit more context on what you were asking there, Amanda? All right, while we wait for Amanda on that, okay. I'll go ahead and ask this next one here. Uh, what are some ways you would recommend that we can acquire more trade-ins? Yeah, so going going on to again, I'm going to talk specifically about OfferUp, but our our dealerships every time they get a live chat engagement uh, from an interested car shopper, uh, they're able to ask about trade-ins, about selling the car. If they don't end up selling a car to them, they can still ask about, hey, would you be open to us making a cash offer on your vehicle? Um, but if you're not a, an OfferUp customer, there is nothing stopping you from going onto the app, downloading the app, uh, creating a, a new account, and then searching for vehicles. Uh, we make it very easy for you to go onto our cars and trucks section, the passenger vehicle section, and set up a search alert. That way you get notified every time new, new vehicles are listed in your community that meet those uh, criteria. This one here says, uh, how is OfferUp different in comparison to the Facebook marketplace for dealers? Can, can you repeat that? Sorry. How is OfferUp different in comparison to the Facebook marketplace for dealers? Yes, that's a great question. Um, so the programs are very, very different just in terms of how much uh, we put into it. So Facebook, we know things are going to change come September, but as it stands today, um, you list your cars onto Facebook and they're just organic listings that over time uh, go down the feed and it's less uh, searchable and navigating is, is deteriorating over time because it goes by um, the time that it was posted. Offer up, what we do for our dealerships is you get all of your listings on there, but then I think this is kind of what Amanda was talking about. You get your featured promoted placements that keep a certain number of your vehicles at the top of the feeds. And those are targeted towards uh, the most serious buyers and the most interested buyers in your vehicles. So we give uh, a little bit more utility and tools to our dealerships to be able to um, fully leverage the offer up platform. So Amanda sent in some clarification yep. from earlier. So when I search for products on OfferUp, I always see the featured ads slash promoted offers. As a dealer, mm -hmm. how do I get my vehicles ahead of that and not lost in the other car dealers? So as, as a verified dealer, every advertising package um, available to our, our dealerships come with those promoted placements. So again, those, those promoted placements, it's... Um, almost think of them as a, a secondary post. So you have your organic listings, but you also have your promotions that will pop up when people search for that exact type of vehicle or a like vehicle, okay? All right, one more here it says, uh, you mentioned asynchronous communication as being a key part of the marketplace. Can you elaborate yeah. on what that means? Yeah, so, Asynchronous communication, again, we'll talk about uh, as it applies to, to offer up, and that's it's the live chat interface. And that's really what our consumers love about the app. Uh, I mentioned over 25% of the car shoppers we, we surveyed said that they're only using offer up to research and buy a car and interact with dealers. Um, and it's because of that asynchronous communication where they have a direct connection to you. They can ask a question right away with the opportunity to get a response right away, but also let's say they're they're in the middle of their lunch break, they send you a message, question about a vehicle, um, they can come back 
later on that day and jump right back into the conversation. So that's the asynchronous part is it gives um, a lot of control and autonomy to both parties to respond when they need to. But I mean, from the dealership standpoint, we, we all know the faster you respond, the, the more of a chance they, that it is they're still in an active user session. So. All right, it appears that we have no more questions. Oh, we've got one more here. Okay. So if you if someone contacts us, it would go straight to BDC within our CRM if that's how we set it up, question mark. Um, yes, for part of it. So getting into the live chat, um, every single time a car shopper engages with your dealership, they will have the option to send you their personal contact information with that initial message. So those those uh, contact cards, I'll call them, will go directly into your CRM once we get that set up. Um, however, it fluctuates month over month. About 50 to 55% of consumers uh, choose to give their personal contact information right off the bat. And it's because of that, that choice, they can either stay relatively anonymous or they can give you the personal contact information um, that we see them being much more valuable leads because they're much more serious buyers. Um, so yes, there is the option to have them filtered into your CRM and go directly to your BDC, but you would still want to have a way uh, and a uh, process set up to work the live chats as they come in, because it's still going to be about half the value you're getting out of the, the program. All right, while we wait on any more questions, uh, Alexander, do you have any closing comments for today's webinar? I got one more. There we go. Um, yeah, I re really appreciate everybody coming and um, staying tuned through this. It's It's been a, a crazy 18 months and th this group, you guys know that we've, we've hopefully seen the worst of it in terms of shutdowns, but it's just going to get better from here. Um, and the horizontal marketplaces, it's, it's a great opportunity to start to connect with the, these shoppers that historically didn't own a car. So we'd, we'd love to to work with each of you and help you in any way we can. It appears that we have no more questions at this time. Thank you so much for attending today's webinar and thank you to Alexander and OfferUp for this great presentation. To view this webinar on demand and future digital dealer webinars, please visit digitaldealer.com webinars. Once again, thank you and have a great day.